Hey there, welcome conscious fashion friends to Inside Fashion Design's weekly community conversations. This is where you can meet and greet with a fashion industry pro. This is your opportunity, not only to hear from the experts and their knowledge and advice, but also to connect with them directly to grow your network and use their learnings to level up and empower you in your own career. For 30 minutes each week, we will have a quick chat The perfect morning break where you will walk away with some good nuggets of advice, tips and tricks, and two of my all-time favorite things, inspiration and community connection. I love building connections because it strengthens our support system. You grow your community and you grow your support and we can all succeed together. I am continuously finding amazing people through LinkedIn and referrals and 99.9% of the time, these folks also love to connect, share their experiences and stories, offer advice, and even more recommendations and suggestions. That's why each week you will find us here chatting with a fashion industry pro. So hop on in, join the conversation, say hello, ask a question, share your own tips, stories, favorite resources, or own piece of advice. Follow me on LinkedIn so you don't miss out Every single week, we'll be chatting with a fashion industry pro. Are you a fashion industry pro and you want to share your story? Message me and let's talk. Who knows? You could be our next featured guest. Thanks for joining us today. Now, let's dive into today's session. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us again today. If it's your first time here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is a quick 30-minute session of inspiration. Grab your coffee, grab a drink or your lunch. Um, We want to be here. Just quick nuggets, tips and tricks that you can take away and inspire you for your day. And I'm happy to have Camilla Sanders with us today. She was with us previously on another topic. So happy to have her join us again. Um, Before we get started on today's session, I have four action steps for you if you're watching. If you're watching live, thank you. Tell us um, your action steps are to introduce yourself in the comments, in the chat. Tell us where you're from. Uh, Number two is to follow us on LinkedIn so you can stay up to date on future live sessions that we have. They're always live on LinkedIn. You don't need to RSVP. You just show up and and, um, find us on the LinkedIn page and join the conversation. Um, Questions, comments, feedback. We'd love to hear from you. We want this to be conversational and um, we want to inspire and teach each other and and connect. So if you introduce yourself, you see someone on here that is new and maybe would be a good person to connect with, please do. We want to provide that opportunity for everyone here. And I'm going to introduce Camilla for the second time. And she is a powerhouse uh, force to be reckoned with because doing so many different things in the space of uh, making an impact, social impact. She is an award-winning 20 plus year marketing pro leading business and marketing strategies. I have to look at my notes because it's such a long list of all your accomplishments. (laughs) You have crafted strategies for Fortune 500 companies uh, generating over 1 billion in revenue. You are also a podcaster. You're an event planner. You work in web and AI tech. Huh? I'll keep going. You are an international remake ambassador, which is fantastic. I just became a remake ambassador about a week ago. So I'm super excited to join in that organization and connect the world of BIPOC communities, governments, corporations, um, specialists, and citizens to amplify voices of local artisans and communities, all of those things very near and dear to my heart and what we're doing here at Inside Fashion Design. Um, So welcome, welcome. And today we're going to talk about making your professional and personal impact and how we can do that. So we are excited to hear from you as the expert. 
And um, I guess we can just, we'll just dive in to topic number one, which is, let's see, if you want to give a little intro to yourself beyond that, please feel free. Um, but we're here today. We have three things we want to cover and for folks to take away. And the first one is tips and nuggets on how to develop a long and short term strategy, because we know that without this strategy, um, you really don't have that guiding vision and force to lead you to where you're trying to go. So this is a great topic and um, looking forward to diving in. So let's let's get started. Yeah, I'm excited to be here again. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it's such a great topic and a topic that I talk about all the time. And I just love to talk about strategy <laughs> because it's really that overall picture, like you said. I think a lot of people, they have really great ideals and they have this huge vision or goal that they want to accomplish, but they have no idea like how to get there <laughs> and what's the best way to get there. And so that's what a strategy does, right? And I, what I like to do as far as like developing a short and long-term strategy, you really have to start at your vision. Mm -hmm. And so when I say vision, what I mean, because I work with a lot of people that want to make an impact on the world, what I mean is what is your vision of the world? Like what mm -hmm. is the, if it was like the perfect world that you would live in, what would that world look like, right? Yeah. And so it's not just, your, not just your own goal, but... Yeah not a goal, yeah. like a huge well, vision, right? Much bigger picture. I love <laughs> right. that. Yeah. Cause like, I don't think most people think beyond, not in a bad, not in a, you know, saying it's a bad thing, but you have like your own personal goal and vision, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's a different perspective thinking about yeah. it from the like world. You bring it, you bring it like a really high level because that's how you get other people on board with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not just about yourself, but then also usually your vision of the world is pretty consistent right? Like your goal can change some, you know, throughout your life, you know, like your goal 10 years ago probably is not your same goal now, but your vision of the world it usually kind of stays the same. So from that vision, then you're going to take your mission. That's where it gets personal. What is your own personal mission or your company's own personal mission for your business, right? What is that mission that you, how do you accomplish that larger vision, right? And then from that mission, then you get your goals, right? So you get your goals from that, from your own personal mission. How do you accomplish that mission? And it doesn't have to be a lot of goals. It could be probably like five or less, like even, it could be one goal. It could be two goals. It could be three goals. Like don't have, you don't have to have a lot of goals because then how are you going to actually accomplish yeah, that? Yeah. And right? then I think it gets overwhelming and then you kind of get stuck. Exactly. Like you don't even know where to start because there's too many. Right. And that's what we're trying to eliminate with this strategy, right? Is to eliminate getting stuck because it's so big and you don't know what to do. So once you have those goals, then you have those measurable objectives, like those measurable, actionable items under that goal of how and it doesn't have to be that many, but it's a because it's objectives. But how do you achieve that goal, right? And so you have different objectives, and then you get down to the tactics, right? What are the tactics that? What are the action things, steps that you're going to get or take to reach those measurable outcomes? And so that's kind of where I would start as far as like when you're talking about the short and long-term strategy. What is that long-term strategy? Start with that vision. And I will say that when you're talking about long-term, really the whole point of having a strategy is to know which direction to go in and what action steps to take. It doesn't mean like when you're setting something long-term, you probably will achieve it eventually, right? Or you, or you might even change your mind on what you actually want to do um, yeah. as you get to know yourself and your business and what works and what doesn't. But it's really to have that guidepost of what direction you're headed in. Yeah. So what do you define as a short-term strategy? And can you kind of give a outline or... Um, guide of like, what should that include? Starting with the short term, like, what is that? What should you think about? And what should be kind of included in that? Yeah, so typically, and if we're talking about organizations, right? Um, typically, you'll have like a one to three year strategy. 
And that's because if you think about the world now, like it changes in a second, especially mm -hmm. now with especially like now. Yeah. online, artificial intelligence, like everything just shifts, right? And yeah. so you want to have, keep it to like one to three years. And that's what I'm talking about when I say like short term. And really it is about those different elements that go into it. So you have your vision, your mission, your um, also your core values which is mm -hmm. something that gets, you know, personal. I always like to bring in really things that are personal that you don't necessarily think would affect it, but it does affect it as far as like your core values because it affects like who who would you actually work with? You know, right. those type of things. Who do you ha have things in common? Um, and, then, and then you go into like your goals, your objectives, you know, there's timeline budget. So all those things are included in a short-term strategy. Yeah, I love your comment about values because um, as a consultant myself for many years, you know, you get approached, you might get approached by multiple companies and businesses. And, you know, as a freelancer or consultant, you might get really excited like, oh, you know, you're getting all these um, inquiries and people that want to work with you. But then to stop and think and look at them and some of them may not be doing, you know, working in the way that align with your values. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to decide, like, do you want to work with them or, or can you work with them and try to inspire or influence them in some way to maybe shift some of their processes so that it becomes more aligned with your values. But it's a tough, it's kind of a tough choice to turn a client down if they don't align. But I think in the end, you're more um, proud of your work or you're more, um, you know, you, you're, okay to say that you're supporting this brand because they align with your values and you're not, you know, working with someone that's like mass market dumping things in trash or whatever it may be. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of a hard <laughs> decision to actually turn somebody down. Yeah. Especially when you, like, if you're starting out and you like have, and that's really called like a scarcity mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Because you believe that, oh, I need this client. I have to have this client and you get desperate but then that client takes up so much time where you have to turn on the client that you really wanted <laughs> because it's one client yep. that you're spending time with. Yep. So that that's definitely really, really important. And also like you have to like, okay, so last week I had a, um, we talked about, I did a session with Creative Mornings. You can look it up. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah. it's, it's called, um, it was called Strategy Karaoke. But one of the things that came out was doing things that make you feel joy, right? Like leaning into those things that when you're doing things and you're working with certain clients, what are those things that make you feel joy? And then start to lean into those things. And when you have a client that shares your values that you that you are excited to work with, you do a better job. Yeah. You're you're gonna do an amazing job for that that client. You're going to have exponential outcomes with that client. And it's gonna be so much easier. You're like you're just gonna feel really good about it. You're gonna get great reviews from that client. Yeah. So like the value that a client that you actually wanna work with is just exponential versus one that you don't and you like kind of dread when they call and yeah, and you, you know, just feel like, you that know? You feel like that heavy <laughs> energy of just like, oh, you know, and and I have trust me, I've felt that multiple times in my past with um those type of that type of work and yeah so I love the um the karaoke idea that's and and yeah that's so important these days I think is our mental mm -hmm. health as well right and you have to consider yeah, that because true. you know back in the day just working for a corporation um you know that part might be missing or you're not paying attention to it because you're just you know you're doing your job and you're doing a great job and working really hard but maybe missing you know, your self-care and the mental health of, of, you know, your own personality and what you need to, to stay healthy. And that's so important today. And I, I, I'm happy to see that that's becoming a more of a common um, factor yeah. in people's work. So. Yeah. And if you're an entrepreneur, like you have a choice of who you work with mm -hmm. and a litmus test for me too, if I have a client is kind of like, do I come home and like, 
talk about how horrible it is or you know like you you shouldn't have you shouldn't you should be coming home and you should be saying how excited you are to do this project yes. and work with these people yeah. versus coming home and sometimes we do that like in the corporate oh. jobs you come home and you're like oh this happened and i had to work with this person and yeah you know, you're just you're coming home doing that, yeah. yeah like that's not good you need to you need to uh do something different yeah. And going back to your having a short and long term strategy, I think that's when you wake up in the morning every day and you're excited to work on those steps because you have that vision, you have that as a guiding light. And then you're just every day you're so excited to get up and, and start working towards those goals. And and life is a much you're a much happier place <laughs> that yeah, way. And I think it it comes down to those tactics, right? That lead up to that. Because now that you have that plan, you know that this little thing that you're doing, this tactic that you're doing, it might be like one social media post, but that's gonna tie up to, oh, I'm going to accomplish this goal, which accomplishes the mission, which accomplishes this big vision. So if I'm doing steps and I'm hitting those milestones, like that makes me feel happy because I'm getting closer to that goal. You so are, just like you said, yeah. it's that it's that happiness that you're going to start to feel once you start taking steps that you know are actually going to matter. Yeah, I think it was the book Atomic Habits. Oh yeah, that um, yeah. it said one percent. If you pr move forward one percent every day, you're it. It's like compounds right it builds up so you might feel like you're moving so slow but if you're doing just one percent of something towards that goal every day like that adds up and it will get you there it's just yeah time patience and um so i always love that thinking just if it's even just one percent that you're doing every day you're you're making progress yeah and you can you can build upon that so i love that you mentioned that book because and yes, everyone should read that because it kind of tells you like how to build habits and kind of, I love getting into like the scientific of, you know, how your brain works and things like that. Yeah. But, but like when you, when you do your different tactics, like just build upon, like get some, do one thing and let that be a habit, right? Yeah. Let that form into a habit, get consistent. So it's kind of in your subconscious to do it and then move on to that next thing. So it's like you're building up um, your consistency toward working toward that goal. Yeah. So just before we move on to the second um, topic, um, all related, of course, but um, long-term mm -hmm. strategy, like, are you talking like 10 years or how, how long-term is long-term? Um, it, it varies, but it could be like 10 years is a good good kind of litmus you know usually organizations will won't do like a um they're not going to do like a detailed plan for that 10 year you do a detailed plan for the one to three year but you yeah. know where you're you want to be in 10 years okay right? you know yeah. where you want to be so that you're moving toward that that goal so your long-term strategy is like your north star and then you implement the the three-year plan to mm -hmm. get there yeah so it's so moving to topic number two is um, setting the goals. So what's a good way or what is your advice on how to set the goals, the right goals and steps to make sure your, you know, milestones perhaps to make sure you're, you're doing that 1% every day and you are getting there. I think you just said it, right? Is that, and we, we kind of talked about this, right? Is that you are setting those different milestones along the way. So that you feel like you're making that progress so that you are making that progress and get there. And I think a lot of times, some sometimes people are afraid to make, like actually put measurements behind those goals, right? And so you have to put some type of measurement, like when do you want to accomplish it by? What what number is it going to be like? How many do you want to do? Or whatever that, whatever that is, it depends on the goal. Like what is that metric? How are you measuring your progress? so that when you go back and it's not you know when you do this plan it's not like oh this is in place and you can't do anything else like you go back and you measure and you say hey am i meeting this these goals based on these tactics that i have and you can say hey it's taking me way too long or this particular tactic it seems like it's moving a lot faster 
than this other thing that I'm doing. So I'm going to stop doing the thing that's not working. And then I'm going to lean into the thing that is actually working. And another thing that I love to do, and we'll do this during the session, <laughs> is have a uh, brainstorming. So, and I'd like to, because, and this goes back to self-awareness, two people can have the same goal, but the way that I approach it is differently than someone else. So the different tactics that I use based on my own strengths and what I'm good at. So for example, I might reach the goal by going out and networking and connecting and talking to people. Another person might reach this goal by writing or doing blogs mm -hmm. or, you know, going live on LinkedIn or, you know, whatever that is, but it really depends on your own strengths and knowing yourself. And so what I like to do is do kind of a brainstorming activity where you're writing down, like, what are all the different actions that I could take to get to these different objectives or these different goals? Like, what are all the actions that I can take? And now that you have this long list of actions, then you narrow it down from there. What, what are the things that I really, you know, kind of feel like doing or I think it's going to make the most impact? Uh, what are the things that I should do based on my own connections, based mm -hmm. on my own strengths? based on what I'm good at. And so you can kind of narrow it down from there. But I like doing that brainstorming activity with people. Yeah, I love that because you're, you know, like you mentioned, they are, we are looking at the strengths and, you know, you might think of a goal or something you have to do is like build my network. You know, maybe you hate networking in person, like you're very much an introvert, but there's still ways to do that. And so by brainstorming and writing down these things, like you said, you can pick out, okay, what are the things I'm good at and that I know I'll actually do? Whereas if yes. I tell myself, oh, I have to build my network and I have to attend all these networking events and bring my business card and try to you know, meet 20 people, yeah. you might feel like, oh, that's just not my thing. And then you don't do it. You avoid it completely. Um, but giving yourself the permission to say, okay, I, I don't like that. I'm not really good at that. I'm very much an introvert yet. I love speaking to people one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, how do I do that? Is it just through LinkedIn messaging and maybe a phone call like this, um, a zoom session or something. So I, I really like that you pointed that out. That's so good. It's like, it's like, there's no cookie cutter way to do things. You may see other people do it, or your friend might recommend this or, you know, something else. Even sometimes a business coach might say, oh, you need to do this, but they're doing it from a, a particular perspective versus yeah. there's a customized way that you can accomplish what you want. You just have to not be afraid to do it in your own way. Yeah. And of course, there's, you know, facing your fear or getting comfortable with your fear and mm -hmm. pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So that's also, you know, a great that's exercise to do. Right. And so maybe it is like, okay, I'll go to a networking event and I'll be happy if I just talk to two people, you know, I just meet two people. That's all I need to do this time because I'm so uncomfortable. But yet, you know, you're kind of uh, challenging yourself and, and pushing yourself out of your, your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. And that's a muscle, right? Because if you're uncomfortable with something, a lot of times it just means that it's important. And that's why you're so uncomfortable to do it. Cause it's probably going to be the one thing that you do that's going to make the most impact. <laughs> and yeah. so if you kind of push yourself to do things that you're uncomfortable doing, um, in a good positive way, that is, <laughs> um, then, then it kind of works that muscle to say, so that you can, when you do these new, these bigger things, you get more comfortable with being uncomfortable because yeah. no matter what you're doing, like for anybody, like going live, writing something, putting whatever you're doing out in the world, which many creatives do, like as a creative, like, you know, the feeling of being uncomfortable, right? And you kind of have to like be okay with like sitting in, in that and just, you know, keep doing it anyway, keep going anyway, because the world needs what you have. What you have. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a conversation yesterday with um, somebody and he pointed out this really great um, way to think of things too, is almost if you wrote it on a piece of paper, you had two columns before and after. Mm -hmm. So where are you before? And then looking at your goals and working towards your goals and where are you ending up? So what did it look like before? And what does it look like after? So it's such a simple thing, but I don't think a lot of us actually measure or take the moment to be, to think about, okay, this is where I was before I hated networking and I didn't want to go to anything. And now I've, I, to this event and I met three people. So my before and my after, 
Oh, okay. So that's interesting. So, so we're the exercise that I was talking about is a little bit similar to that, but I like what you're saying because a lot of times we fear something and we don't even realize that we're already doing it or have already mm -hmm. done it a million times. So if you're writing like how you think you are, how you used to be, and then what are the things that have already, that you've already done that are similar to that? And you'd be surprised like, oh, well, I do this and I do that. Oh, so yeah. a lot of times we don't even know like who we are. Like we don't even recognize it because we're, you know, we internalize everything. But there's yeah. probably a lot of things that you've already done. And this is this is really good for like college students too. Because a lot of times I'll, I'll, you know, mentor or talk to college students and they'll be like, well, I don't have any experience. And I'm like, well, what have you, been, you know, what did you do in high school? What have you been doing this the college? What are the things that you're most proud of? And then they get in there like, oh no, yeah, I have these strengths. I've done this, yeah, I've done that. Wait, like that. those, like not. give yourself some credit. That's yeah. what I always say. Like, so that exercise yeah. is great to like kind of really dive into like who you are and the good things about about you that you've already done toward your goal yeah and you just don't yeah you don't give yourself that credit you don't recognize it because maybe it's just like second nature and you don't even realize that's a skill mm -hmm. and that's yeah. something that you're comfortable or you've done a zillion times and um we are quickly running out of time mm -hmm. and our point number three was was about self-awareness and how to maximize or you know to practice that a little bit more and so you can maximize like those skills and those strengths um, mm -hmm. for the maximum impact, you know, in your personal and professional life. Yeah. So we, we talked about this a little bit because we talked about core values and like understanding what your values are and sharing that and being involved and having clients that have, share those same values. Um, and then also we talked about leaning into your strengths. So figuring out like what you, what are your strengths? There's a book, it's called Strengths Finders. And you can take a quiz to figure out like what your different strengths are. And it's funny because when you take the quiz, it's like, oh yeah, you kind of know that, but it's good to know like these are the things that are really going to help me to make an exponential impact if I lean into these different strengths and this is just how I'm made, right? And so I'm leaning into those strengths. Um, so that that's another thing. And then we also talked about joy mm. and figuring out and paying attention. And I think that's what self-awareness is, is like really paying attention and knowing yourself, paying attention to how you feel in certain moments. And I think um, that that experiencing that and thinking about those times that brought you joy or that bring you joy and just like from now on if you don't notice that or you can't think of anything just pay attention to how you feel in certain situations um whether that's you know joy or you're not feeling good and then examine like how why do you not feel that way why do you feel uncomfortable is it because of fear and maybe you need to push on through that or is it because of this is just not aligned with you know what you're doing and so it's just like paying attention to those different things and when you can lean into those things that bring you joy when you can lean into your strengths when you can work with people that you align with that is how you make more of an impact on the world yeah because you're i mean can you imagine working with amazing people feeling joy all the time and just doing the things that like you said you're not even aware of because they come so simple to you yeah. I mean, can you imagine a life where you're doing that all the time? Yeah, and, <laughs> like and it's just being surrounded by joy, you know, it lifts the energy and then everyone's working towards the same goal and everyone's happy to do it. And it's just a much more, you achieve more because yeah. you're all believing in, in your mission and that's, that's beautiful and, um, something we all need to strive for. And I think going back to the college student or the young person, you know, I chat with a lot of people in that age range too. And they're like, well, I'm, you know, majoring in fashion merchandising, but I don't really know what I want to do. Or, you know, I very much like the creative um, industry, fashion industry, but not quite finding their place yet. So love the book, um, love, you know, making a, maybe taking a quiz to figure out what your values are, make a list, write it down, put it on your bulletin board. And then that kind of guides you, you know, to yeah. what you're looking for. And maybe it's, you won't figure out the right job, you know, right away or the right company, but at least, you know, what you want to align with and that will at least get you in the right direction. 
Yeah, the, my biggest tip to that person is you have to actually do the thing. So if you're interested in something, do it. Because once you do it, you might be like, oh, this is the worst thing in the world. I thought I was interested in yeah. this, I'm not. Or I yeah. like this particular part of it. Let me do this in a different way. So you really don't know until you actually do it. And then when you start to do things that you really enjoy, then start to lean into those things. But that's that's what I would say. It's not not just like knowing that, but you're never you're not really going to know until you actually do it. Yeah. And I'll add in a comment here about that is um, if you are working in the industry and it's maybe not your favorite role or even your favorite company, stay with it or just um, accept that it's a learning experience. It's a learning opportunity. And yes, you know, try to find other ways or look for another job or whatever on the side. But, you know, even if you feel miserable, I've, you know, I've gone through a lot of really tough jobs. And I, but now that I look back, I learned so much from every single one of those experiences, whether it was learning how to deal with a difficult, you know, boss or difficult coworkers or doing something I didn't enjoy necessarily, but all of those things guided me and led me to where I am now. And it builds up your muscles, right? It's like yeah. building up emotional muscle, mental muscle um, to learn how to deal with that and get through it and manage it and um, use it to your advantage. There's a, a saying like things don't happen to you, they happen for you. Mm -hmm. so everything that happens is for you and using it um, as, as a growth opportunity and we're at 1031. So I don't want to keep <laughs> anyone too long, but I do want to share one slide. So Camilla, you are actually kicking off our conscious fashion design Academy masterclass. It starts October 1st and it is live. So people that sign up can attend and chat with you. We'll be going through exercises. Like you said, like actual, um, you know, we'll have a worksheet where you can participate and, you know, write your own notes and things that Camilla will be guiding us through. Um, so let me share, let's see, this slide. Um, so this is a, we have 22 sessions. So I know it's a lot of sessions to go through. Every session will be recorded. So people don't feel like they need to have to be live at every single one. Um, but it's Tuesday and Thursday for 90 minutes. And each session will be formatted like this, where you're working with an industry expert. They'll share their expertise, um, teach on that topic, and then do, there'll be a little homework, um, some exercises that you can take away so that you walk away with something tangible that you can apply. And so, as I mentioned, the first session is, is with Camilla and it's understanding the fashion industry and its impact. And this is such a good place to start our course because it will guide everyone or inform everyone of, you know, where we're at, um, just like the challenges and looking at the 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 state of the industry and so what can we do um as conscious fashion designers and and learners to impact make an impact in our work and quickly um some we're gonna uh, just point out some of the the le topics the key points in this lesson is exploring environmental and social impact assessing current state and challenges identifying potential for positive change. That's a big one because I think a lot of people want to make a difference and they don't really know how or what's best to do. Um, and what is conscious fashion design? We will talk about that. And navigating the industry with purpose, which is, I think is kind of what we talked about again here today. It's like, what can you do that will be purpose-driven and achieve um, that impact that we all are striving to make? Uh, making informed decisions and contributing to positive change. Again, like what can we do as individuals and whether we're a designer or merchandiser or salesperson, you know, there's a lot of steps that every one of us can take to make an impact in the industry. So that will be our session. You can find information on our website. Um, one more thing I'll call out is we are doing a live meet and greet with the instructors uh, next Tuesday, the 24th at 8 a.m. Again, LinkedIn Live, open to anyone who wants more information about the course. And we'll have, I think about eight to 10 of our instructors will be there. So um, you can actually meet and greet and ask questions and um, learn more about it there. So thank you, Camilla, again, for your, your knowledge and your beautiful soul and sharing it with us today. And um, reach out anyone, even if you're watching the replay, 
uh, send in a question. Reach out to Camilla through LinkedIn. Uh, you can find all her information. If you just Google her, you'll find all the amazing things she does. Um, so with that, I will thank everyone for watching today. And Camilla, thank you again. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you. Okay. Bye. See you later.